What's up, Wastelanders? How's everybody doing today? I'm doing great, and I hope you are too. It's me, Kiki B. Welcome to a brand new episode of Kiki B Plays Paul at 76. Today we're going to be continuing our camp location series, this time with some really fantastic caves and underground spots. Before we get started, if you love what I do here and you want to help support this channel, why not join our Patreon family? Head on over to patreon.com slash or click that link down in the description to see what all the fuss is about and how you can get your name in the credits of my videos. And, of course, join us over on Instagram, at KikiBeePlays. We would love to see you there. Now we're all ready to go, so buckle up, kids. It's time for a road trip, and there won't be any bathroom stops until we get to the end. Our first stop is just west of Vault 76. If you fast travel to the vault and walk into the sunset, you'll come across this random archery target on top of some rocks, and if you get a little closer, you'll fall through a hole into a cozy little cave and break one or both of your legs. It's got a nice vibe if you like dead people and overgrown weeds, which, let's face it, most of us here do. And the actual cave entrance is not too huge, which makes it easy enough to camouflage with some brambles and trees so you can snipe innocent, unsuspecting wildlife as it wanders by. You'll need to use single object blueprints to place some types of items in here, but you probably won't remember that until after you've rage quit and thrown your PlayStation controller across the room. At least, I assume. Just guessing. Next up, we've got an interesting little place near Foundation. If you fast travel over and head south along the road, you'll come across a little bridge with a random settler NPC standing around being useless and making pointless comments. If you veer off the road here and look under the bridge, you'll spot a rather large drainage pipe running underneath. You can put foundations and other stuff in here and turn it into a little hobo hole, or you could use it as an entryway into a larger structure. Either way, it's an interesting and unusual place to build, and you're bound to have some fun with it. Moving a little farther south along the Savage Divide, we're going to fast travel to Lake Eloise and head straight north. You'll come across a massive cliff, and if you look in the right spot, you'll see a big split in the rocks. There's a very nice cave here that's quite empty and clean, aside from the acid node on the ground. If you want to set up camp here and you don't plan on mining the acid, then I'd recommend at least adding a floor so you don't melt your feet off when you go sleepwalking every night. Although I guess you'd only melt them off once, and it would fix the sleepwalking problem too, unless you're secretly a lizard and you can regrow body parts. Also, watch out for the Scorch Beasts. Sometimes they get hungry and crawl out of the nearby fissure looking for a midnight snack, which would be you, in case you were wondering. Okay, this is one of my favorite places in the game, though I'll admit I have yet to actually build here. Just north of Watoga, there's a highway with an interesting little secret. If you duck under this broken slab of road here, you will find an absolutely fantastic tunnel. It looks small at first, but if you keep going, you'll notice there doesn't seem to be an end in sight. Which is correct, you cannot actually see the end, because it runs all the way up to the southern edge of abandoned bog town. There are some larger pockets and spaces as you go that would make great camp spots, and you can build literally anywhere along this entire tunnel. There are also enough large-ish holes along the way that can be used for exits, and some nice small ones that make lovely windows. So if you decide to roleplay mole people and camp somewhere in the middle, you won't be stuck walking forever to get into your little burrow. As a bonus, there are plenty of rats for when you're feeling peckish. And at the northern end, you'll come across a ready-made shelter that you can also use, complete with furniture and lighting and junk and walls and doors. This is where the fancy mole people live, and you can easily fit the entire mole mansion into yes. your camp radius. The tunnel continues a little farther north and comes out just before the Bogtown Red Rocket, so if there's a weekly challenge where you need to kill a super mutant behemoth, you can just go visit your big green neighbors with their stupid noisy assault rifles and bring them some fancy lad snack cakes and bullets to welcome them to the neighborhood. Heading north into the deep, dark mire, we find ourselves at a ruined old pre-war house. But Kiki, I hear you say, this isn't underground. Uh, yeah, no kidding. But if you go just over this way, you'll see a lot of pipes and air ducts and machinery sticking out of the ground, and oh, maybe now you see where this is going. On the other side of all this mess is a cozy little bunker that's home to a young rad roach couple and a lot of old crap. But we like old crap because we're a bunch of hobos with shotguns. We've got some basic amenities, including the traditional hobo metal barrel fire inside, and a burnt-out pickup truck outside that would make a fantastic bed for those nights when sleeping under a roof feels a little too claustrophobic after all those years of vagrancy. Now, just a little ways northwest of our happy hobo hole, we've got another fun little burrow. If you liked riding the rails in your pre-wasteland hobo days, this is the home for you. Under this massive power pylon, which the government undoubtedly used to monitor your thoughts and give your goldfish cancer before the war, and the Enclave is probably still using today, somebody managed to dig a big enough hole to fit a couple of train cars in, and then proceeded to actually put a couple of train cars in it. Maybe it was the electromagnetic radio microwaves, or whatever chemicals make rainbows in the water, that made them stronger than a super mutant behemoth, because there are no railroad tracks anywhere near here. 
So try to wrap your head around that for a minute and then enjoy the very cozy family home they built here before you realize that now everyone who lived here is probably either dead or scorched, even the kids they apparently had. You're welcome. For the last stop on our trip, we've got another lovely spot in the swamplands with the murder vines. Just west of Big B's rest stop, you'll come across a little bridge, and yes, we're going under it. Surprise! This is the perfect spot to live out all your bridge troll dreams in peace and solitude. Building here can be a little tricky since the previous bridge trolls decided to go ahead and die down here. So now you won't be able to place foundations where their stupid skeletons are, and obviously the bridge troll accord of 2065 clearly states that you must let your brethren rest where they've fallen, which is why there are so few bridge trolls left these days. Eventually, they got tired of living next to piles of troll skeletons and moved into the sewers and bedroom closets instead. But it's a really nice spot in spite of them, so enjoy. That's it from me today, folks. I hope you enjoyed this video, hope you learned something. If you liked this and are interested in supporting this channel, check out that Patreon link in the description, and of course, join us over on Instagram. And with that, folks, take care of yourselves, be good to each other, and I will see you in the next video.